Hi, everyone, and welcome to this edition of the MCHD Paramedic Podcast 360. I'm Dr. Rob Dixon, and today I have our clinical chief, Kevin Crocker, with us. Hi, Kevin. Hello, everyone. Hey, today, guys, we're going to talk about the EKG in syncope. So this is a time we're getting an EKG that's not for chest pain. We're not looking for STEMI. We're not looking for ischemia. We're looking uh, for certain patterns. What I want you to take out of this is to be able to identify those certain patterns. Um, I think we'd be remiss uh, talking about syncope if we didn't start with the differential for syncope. That was your thing. I'd like pointed at you. <laughs> like you got to say something now. That one's yours. Okay, I'm ready. Uh, <laughs> so we, we have done a podcast on this as well. It's episode three, so I'd recommend going back and listening to the podcast. Uh, Dr. Patrick does a good job talking about don't crap your pants, which is a mnemonic that he uses to, to keep him on task when he's looking at these syncope patients. So C is cardiac structure abnormalities, R is rupture, so AAA uh, or ectopic, some kind of bleeding, A is arrhythmia, uh, P is for pulmonary embolism, and S is for subarachnoid hemorrhage. Dr. Dixon has a different way of looking at it. Right, I look at it as syncope and syncope plus. So there's syncope, all those ones that Kevin talked about. If you have a subarachnoid, you have a rupture, you have a PE, you will, on your history and clinical examination, you're gonna come up with clues that take you down that diagnostic pathway. The just passed out and now fine, right? These are the difficult patients because you don't have any of those clues. They have a normal clinical exam, uh, and then they have the only really bit of information you get is EKG. So the most important, that's what we're gonna focus on today. So case one, all these cases will look uh, amazingly the same. It's a 16 year old at track practice. He passes out, now he feels fine. There's the first EKG. Chief, you want to have a go at that one? Sure. So at a glance, it looks like a normal EKG. So. Right. I mean, it looks fairly normal. I go, yeah, normal. Absolutely. Normal QRS, P for every QRS. But when you look at the T wave, uh, it's way out there. So your QT is very long in this EKG. Right. And that's the key, right? It's greater than half the R to R. So what we have here is long QT syndrome. So um, normal, right, is less than half of the R to R distance. Or I say uh, greater than 500 milliseconds in the QTC is abnormal. You're going to find different numbers written, but when you get up between the, the 500 range, that's getting to be a long QT once you correct it. So to review that EKG again, this can this would be easy to miss, wouldn't it? Absolutely. But you look at that, that, R, to, that R to R interval and the T wave is greater uh, than half of the R to R interval. So long QT uh, can lead to uh, dysrhythmia. It can be, it's uh, familial but it can be worsened by medications and diff, uh, especially that we, we prescribe. So long QT syndrome. What's our treatment for it? It's AICD. So next one, Chief, have a go at this one. This one's a little harder. Yeah, uh, it is harder. That's why I gave it to you. <laughs> Thank you. So this is a, clearly when you look at it from first glance, it doesn't look normal. Uh, but you, just, you look at your QRS, QRS looks normal. It's not wide. You do CP waves uh, before your QRS. But when you look in your uh, you know, anterior septal leads, the V1, V2, it just doesn't look right. Like It almost looks like a, a STEMI, but we know it's not a STEMI patient. Right, the patient's normal. It's a 16-year-old that passed out at track yeah. practice. Now the kid is fine. So what, what you look at here exactly, it jumps out at me, and it looks like an infarct. It's kind of a pseudo-infarct or pseudo-right bundle branch uh, pattern. It's called Brugada syndrome. And this is a, a familial genetic uh, defect um, that is caused by an electrolyte channel abnormality. It causes this pseudo-infarct, this uh, repolarization pattern. Uh, and can uh, lead to uh, dysrhythmia uh, collapse and sudden cardiac death. It's genetic, there's multiple subtypes. It's an uh, electrolyte channel abnormality, uh, common, most common in, in males from Southeast Asia. And what's our treatment in the patient with uh, syncope and it's symptomatic, it's uh, an AICD or implanted defibrillator. So once again, uh, Brugada pattern, I like this one. There are different subtypes, but they all look kind of similar. They look like a saddle pattern. Yeah, and you can see the saddle pretty good here in V1. So I right. think this is a good, a good analogy for okay. it. So. so next one, I'm going to give you the hard one, Chief. So tackle this one. Uh, this is a lot harder, yeah, yeah. especially that far away. <laughs> um, so at first glance, it looks like a normal EKG again. So you see a, a QRS that's not wide. You do see a P wave. But when you look closely, that P wave is really, really close to the QRS. You have a short PR interval. Um, yeah, next slide. So when you zoom in, you'll, you'll see that slurred. Uh, right, P the, into the QRS. The delta so. wave. Yep. Right. And so this is, we'll park in some white. So this is an accessory pathway uh, that's really an abnormality in our normal conduction. Remember our normal conduction system, SAAV his Purkinje is built there for a reason. We have a yield sign at the AV node. Why is that? Because we want the atrial 
uh, kick the, the atria to depolarize first and fill, completely fill the ventricle before the ventricle fires. That's why we have that uh, yield sign, the AV node, to slow conduction there. This bypasses the AV node, so it can be problematic to use nodal blockers in these patients. Uh, in my clinical practice, it's many of these patients have come with their diagnosis, thank goodness. Luckily. Luckily. <laughs> uh, and what's the treatment is ablation in these patients who want to avoid nodal blockers if they come up with this or you see something suspicious for a delta wave and collapse. What's the, the worry is that we'll give a nodal blocker and we may produce a worse dysrhythmia than we had originally. So uh, Wolf, Parkinson, White. Electricity, electricity, electricity. Right, exactly right. Folks. Uh, next slide, Chief. I want to give that one a go. Again, at first glance, it's kind of an odd-looking EKG. So it should doesn't look normal. Yeah, yeah. So you have a you know a normal-looking QRS complex with a, looks like P waves for every QRS. But when you look at V2, V3, V4, the amplitude of the QRS complex is huge. Um, yes. We call it the kissing QRS. Right. So if your QRS yeah. are kissing, uh, it's a large amplitude, which means you have a big heart. Yeah. So it's LVH. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. These are patients with a uh, hypertrophy specifically uh, the intraventricular septum and when their heart gets under stress it causes an outflow tract obstruction that can lead to dysrhythmias here so hypertrophic cardiomyopathy it's the most common cause of sudden death in athletes in the u.s so one of the things i tell our medics is to look for the listen for systolic murmurs on young healthy kids when you're if you're doing a sports physical or an exam these patients will many times have a systolic murmur that will be a clue to their diagnosis. This will worsen on Valsalva. So uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, or if you see uh, LVH on EKG, especially in a young athlete, right? That athlete stays out of, of sport uh, until they're getting echo and are seen by a cardiologist. So remember, when you if you don't look for these things, you will not find them. These patients are symptom-free. They're not going to have a bunch of clues and that are going to lead us to their diagnosis and they're often young and healthy uh, we won't see it unless we're looking for it we get an ekg every time in these patients right a, a collapsed patient or a near collapse which actually um, confers the same short-term risk to patients should all get an ekg not to necessarily look for stemming the asymptomatic patient but to look for these abnormalities uh, long qt brugada wolf parkinson white uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So, Chief, give us a take home. Take it home for us. Listen to podcast episode three uh, for Dr. There Patrick. you go. Plug so, the podcast. Absolutely. Uh, don't forget craps. So, your cardiac abnormalities, your uh, ruptures, your arrhythmias, your PE, your subarachnoid hemorrhage, history, physical, 12 lead. That's vitally important in these patients. And when you're focusing on that EKG in, in the syncopal patient, right? Think about those other things that aren't a STEMI. Look at the Q, QT interval. Should be half of the R to R, less than half the R to R. Think about Brugada or a pseudo infarct pattern in B1 and B2. Looks like a saddleback pattern. Wolf Parkinson White with the delta wave and hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So thanks everybody for watching out there today. As always, if you have questions or comments, please uh, contact us at the podcast. Uh, you can reach us at the email at podcast at mchd-tx.org. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you again soon.